he is Dr. Salma Shaili and he is a senior executive and expert, National Program for Space, Artificial Intelligence and Advanced Technology. Our next panelist is Thuraya Alharthi. She is a project manager, the National United Government Portal, Ministry of Transport, Communications and Information Technology, MTCIT. Our next speaker, Mohammed Araspi, Managing Director, Oman Technology Fund. Amar Mustafa Al Fadl, Managing Director, Competence HR. Saeed Al Ghannami, Head of, Head of Communication, Info Oman Information Technology Society. Saeed was not able to make it. Our next panelist, Saeed Mahmoud Saeed Al Mandari, President of Student Advisory Council, Majan University College. Christoph Zogbi, CEO, Zaka, who is joining us from Beirut, Lebanon, online. Saif Al Ma'amri, Operations Manager, National Energy Center, NEC. And Masoud Al Maskari, Director of Human Capital and Operations at Channels. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan bil jamia. Good afternoon, everyone here. Uh, and welcome the panelists here on the stages. From right to left, left to right. Inshallah. <laughs> so, no need to introduce you all. Uh, I can, I can uh, leave the speaker uh, to everyone that to introduce himself. Um, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mohammed al Raspi, Managing Director at Oman Technology Fund. I lead the Precede uh, Fund, Taqween, and uh, run the accession programs at uh, OTF for all uh, funds. Uh, we've been around since 2017, um, and we've invested in more than 130 startups within the MENA region. Um, uh, and uh, that's a brief background about myself. Startups should strengthen a relationship with Muhammad. Uh, in the name of Allah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu uh, alaikum. Uh, this is Saeed al Mandari, uh, President of Students Advisory Council in Majani University College. Uh, we are aiming to improve the students' uh, skills and their uh, studies and uh, improving the youth even. So uh, this is in shortcut. We don't uh, want to take time to introduce myself. Okay. Assalamu uh, alaikum. Masoud al Maskari. I'm the HR. Uh, Director and Operations for Channels. Channels is a subsidiary of STC, uh, Saudi Telecom. Um, we are basically the distributor uh, of telecom uh, in Oman. Um, my background is an engineer, been working as an engineer for the last 10 years, and then the last 22 years I've been uh, in HR. Shukran. Okay, so I'm not the only engineered background HR person around, do I? All right. My name is Amr Al Fadl. I am the managing director of a company called Competence HR. From the name, it, it specializes in HR. We do recruitment, leadership training, and uh, assessments, as well as other HR infrastructure consultancy. My background is HR. I'm uh, sorry, engineer, and then I uh, I worked in uh, property development, and for the last ten years in HR. That's all. Thanks. Assalamu alaikum, Saif Al Ma'amar, uh, Operation Manager, uh, and since 2017 I was uh, working as HR Manager, but this year uh, moved to uh, Operation Manager in a semi government company, which is uh, NEC, National Energy Center. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Surya Al Harthi, I am Senior Specialist in Innovation and Emerging Technologies. And I'm looking forward to discuss together this essential topic when it comes to the employment chapter here in Oman. Thank you, everyone here, and welcome to the stage. Uh, of course, that uh, you know, over the whole decades, uh, that people they are facing an issues with the employment. And before we start this, let us give you some insights about the employment rate 
in the, our current year and Oman and in the region uh, countries. Uh, in Oman, the percentage of employment rate is 64%. Qatar, 83%. UAE 76, Bahrain 69, Kuwait 66, Saudi Arabia is 50%. So still, still we have uh, some left rate for unemployment. And we know that about the last or the whole industrial revolution, the first from the first, second, third and fourth. People have been replaced by the machines. And what does that mean? That means the human themselves, they improved their way. They improved, they improved their skills. Instead of living in a traditional way, they improve their skill to deal with the tools, with the techniques in the current eras. <clears throat> so for, for the opportunities, there are lots of opportunities, of course, and also for the challenges, there are some challenges. If the people, they are not improving their skills and try to learn a new skills, of course, they will, they will face some of the difficulties. Uh, let me here start with the engineer Mas'ud al-Maskari to ask you a question. What do you see the employment challenges over the last decades till now? Um, I think it's, it's a, maybe it's, it's a good thing that I'm, I'm starting this. Um, I'll give you, a, basically I've been working for the last 30 years. So I've started in the 90s and then the 2010, and then up to 2022 20, now. And um, if you look at the 90s, uh, we've had lots of graduates from leave school, uh, school leavers, and we didn't have a lot of opportunities for um, graduates from college and universities. Um, the, the jobs were available easily for, for, for Omanis, uh, and of course, but it was very difficult for Omanis to, to look for jobs because there was no technology and, and other things. So basically, you have to write a letter to apply for a job uh, and go door to door uh, and submit this letter so you can get employment. And, and, and the same thing, you go through several uh, interviews. Um, at that time, the minimum wage was uh, about 140. So you have a lot of Omanis doing a lot of jobs. Uh, later on, the... Uh, the minimum wage went into 200 rials, and still we had a lot of Omanis doing a lot of jobs, but uh, there was a lot of push for Omanis to do uh, college and degree uh, degrees. Okay, so by end of 2010, we've had about 40% of Omanis uh, graduating uh, with, with degrees and, uh, and diplomas. So we still had about 60% uh, they are with uh, they are school leavers and they were accommodated and they had a lot of opportunities uh, however later on after that there were a lot of investments coming up into Oman a lot of companies are opening up so there were a lot of opportunities to hire good experienced Omanis who've already had who've been working in the 80s and the 90s and, and the companies were taking good experienced uh, people uh, later on uh, from 20 10 to now, basically there have been huge changes. Um, the, basically now, if you look at it, we have about 95% of the graduates, they have college and degrees. So it's only 5% or 10% actually with uh, um, certificates, secondary school certificates, and they, they will get the jobs easily. So the challenge now is that this huge number of uh, graduates with college and degrees, do they have enough jobs uh, that suits them, all right? And do we have enough creation of jobs, um, you know, for them? Now also the, the, the minimum wage has gone to 325 for everybody, regardless whether you have a diploma or a degree, everybody, uh, you can hire anybody with uh, the minimum wage of 325. So there's a lot of challenges. So we can see now we move from Oman is with uh, not educated, only with uh, secondary school, and now majority of Oman is who are graduating from the colleges and the universities, actually all of them are with diploma and degrees. So the challenge is much, much higher, and we, we, you know, we need to look into that. Thank you. Thank you, Ingenier Masoud. Of course, uh, youth today is not like uh, youth yesterday. Today they are graduated and they compare themselves with the global. And they yeah, it's easy to access any, any data 
and they compare themselves, of course, if they are in Oman, compare themselves to other countries, they are advanced countries. Uh, we know that 69% uh, of Oman population is considered the youth, who are less than 29 years. And uh, if I'm asking uh, Mr. Saif al uh, first, what is the global and Omani employment challenges, youth Omani challenges here? Uh, yes. Uh, well, nowadays, uh, youth employment become as, uh, يعني, we can say that, uh, become as center discussion around the world. And we have a lot of uh, challenges that they have uh, faced with the employ youth employment, like uh, lack of uh, education uh, and uh, skills, training, uh, regulations also which mean that uh, the chances of uh, development will be uh, less and uh, the work will be also uh, very low. So we can say that the challenges, global challenges it's affected because of uh, lack of education. We have a lot of countries here in, in, uh, in the world that they don't have education, but here in Oman, we have this education, but we need to also to focus on one which is very important thing to select the right specialization, which mean uh, during the study in the colleagues and universities, we, they have to also to see the demand of the market, whether uh, we have new technologies, we have a lot of things uh, new like uh, what we have in National Energy Center that we have started to uh, to change the mechanical meters from uh, from uh, to mechanical uh, meters and uh, manual meter reading to smart meters, which mean this is was the the big challenge where uh, public of uh, authority was يعني, accepted us to face the challenge and to start in Musandam area, which is the, uh, the difficult area here in Oman. And we face this challenge, and we are successful to change all water meters to smart meters. Thank you, thank you. Uh, now we hear that uh, lots of people, they are saying if they want to hire and Omani, they said they are not qualified or we need to spend lots of training on them to, either for education or to be uh, or to develop them so it's costly but other they said no we are depending on only on Omanis and we can't depend on Omanis more than the others so uh, Mr. Amr how employable are the Omani youth Shukran. Um, yeah, it's a, that's a very sensitive uh, question. And I suppose if I say, well, they're not employable, I'm, I'm going to be shot down. But the fact of the matter is uh, there are challenges in employing them. You see, the, the, as I, I speak as a recruiter, all right? I, I'm, I, I'm the pure private sector, and I'm a recruiter, or one of the things I do is a recruitment. To be able to get in front of a potential employer, you have to have a stunning profile or a CV to start with. All right? Whether you are able to stack it up with qualifications and credentials will obviously you know, guide your possibility to come in front of an employer. Once you come into, in front of an employer, then what actually makes a difference is you know, what attitude and what energy you bring to the table. Uh, you know, the skills and qualifications, uh, I'm sure a lot of my colleagues over here will agree with me, you know, when I say that, you know, your college degree only teaches you how to learn. It really doesn't matter what you graduate in, yeah? And I, I have, I, I'm an electrical and telecoms engineer, but I only did that for four years of my life. After that, I moved on to other things. Mr. Oud, the same thing. I remember we both started in PDO. So, um, so to answer your question, uh, Khalaziz, you know, what are the challenges? The challenges uh, in employing Omanis, uh, 
well, one of the challenges, there are, there are a number of challenges, one of the challenges is not actually relating to their qualifications or credentials, it's more relating to their attitude, to our attitude, and I, we are all Armani, so I'm saying our attitude. Yeah, we need to get it right. Yeah? When you say to our attitude, as an employer or as an youth? No, I, I mean as, an, as, a, as a job seeker. As a job seeker. Yes. yes. Uh, okay, if there is a challenge, we know that uh, now you touch one, one important uh, point. Yes, most of the graduates, they are complaining. We are graduating, for example, from IT, and we will be recruited in different stream or different, different area. And this is a big company. The experience of, for example, some without X companies in uh, some of the field, yes, it is hiring people from different stream, and, but put them in, I can say, a training, a training to be another, another stream. So, will, will we consider this as a challenge for, for the future? There, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. No, nothing the, wrong. The, absolutely nothing wrong. The one thing that I have learned from working in multinationals is that if you've done your college degree, you're trainable. Yeah? Then your career path will very much depend on your potential and of course on your performance to prove your potential. Yeah? So if, you're, if you have or if you've been identified as a person with potential and you consistently prove it with your performance, most likely and the employer will take you into their core business. Yeah? In the likes of you know, Shell and Petroleum Development, Erman, and you know, the core business is subsurface, yeah, and, and some surface facilities as well. And, and, and believe me, the, the smarter people always got pulled into uh, the core business, yeah, uh, no matter where you are. One example, and I'm not going to say Masoud or myself, we are conflicted, yeah, but you know, I, I, our friend, uh, His Excellency uh, Engineer uh, Salim al yep. is an IT graduate. Yep. And I remember him because we were pretty much the same batch. MashaAllah Ali, the guy was very, very good. Yeah? Immediately he was taken in, he went and did a bridging master's First, degree yep. in petroleum, and off he goes. He was a <coughs> petrophysicist after that. Yeah? So can we consider that it's like the study is wasting time for them? Sorry. The study. The, no. the, the, year, the year they spent, yeah, as you said that before, yeah, the, the certificate is a key for, for, uh, for the, for, for the field. That's but it. should we call from this stake, this, uh, should, it must be present some of the cooperation between the institution and the industry to know the future, this is the, the future skill, or what they required in four years, in yeah. five years, in six years. Yes, no, it so, doesn't nullify. Because you are, you are an HR guys, you are an HR guys. So no, you should think on this before, before that setting plan for five years, six years, ten years, no. what exactly the skills. No, and maybe that we can come to the Magan colleagues uh, to see, so uh, what, what, what their plan in this, uh, in this area. No, there, needs to be, there needs to be continuous dialogue between the industry and the educational institution to indeed to, to, to decide what the demands are. Uh, <clears throat> in regards uh, to Majan College, in regards of Majan College, uh, there are many opportunities to the students for Majan, especially on ho all the students or entire students in the world even, not even in Oman. But uh, in Majan College we are focusing on the, uh, how we can uh, guide them to learn new uh, skills that uh, that improve their life, not even studies. We have uh, guidance uh, here in Mijan College that improve the skills that can help the students to get job easily. So the the secret behind how to uh, to get a, a job easily is how you took the idea of learning a new skill and how you develop this skill to a job that you want. Then the job will come to you, not, not the students go to the job. Can I add something? Yeah. Just to give an example, uh, 30 years ago there was nothing called human resources degree. So most of the HR people coming from psychology or administration and they became HR professionals, that's right. 30 years ago, 40 years ago, there was no petroleum engineering degree. So all the engineers now, even in PDO and others, were very, very senior. Maybe they are IT guys, 
maybe they're civil engineers, maybe they're electrical engineers. So it doesn't matter what degree you do. What matters is what do you do after the degree, how you take yourself forward. So that means you, show, you shape the newborn uh, qualified person after he graduated. Uh, of course, uh, we know that uh, people, we are not blaming, of course, the, the company that not, not recruiting people or the youth uh, graduates. Because we know that there are several uh, circumstances is affecting these things. And what happened uh, last time that uh, COVID-19 was affecting the economy and affected lots of uh, companies. So it's an economical issue. But another way, yeah, people or the graduates uh, started to think on establishing uh, their, uh, their companies. And of course, uh, in technology, we have an OTF uh, uh, one independent uh, co a company, it's called company? Uh, a company, OTF, Sunduq Al-Omani Lit Technology, Oman Technology Funds. It's sponsored, the, and, uh, I can say first, guiding, helping, supporting, and maybe sponsoring these uh, startups. So what are the opportunities in this area? But, uh, this is to Mr. Mohammed. Uh, thank you very much for the question. Um, as Amr was saying earlier, uh, attitude has a big uh, impact. So Alhamdulillah, we've been investing in uh, startups and uh, that's one of the, see, the, the, the bridges a gap between uh, academia and what is required in, uh, in, the, in the field at the moment. Um, so startups are looking at different or uh, disruptive ways of the delivering technologies. And um, we have, actually most of our startups have a, um, a requirement for uh, people to be part of their teams and they have shortage um, and the most, most of them say just give me someone who has a good attitude and I'll take care of everything else uh, degree or no degree that's not important so the fact is well, they could have been studying something and then they, they could be completely different has nothing to do with IT and they're more than happy to take them as long as their attitude is and they're coachable um, so one of the biggest challenges is not it's actually lack of uh, resources it's not the fact that they have not studied or not it's also maybe it's a maybe it's a, some sort of mind shift, and this is one of the things we do within OTF because we run an acceleration program, and main part of that acceleration program is actually changing the mindset of the of our founders and uh, those who are part of their teams, and we include everyone in the process, and the idea is that eventually, because the likelihood of a startup succeeding is very low, unfortunately, worldwide. Uh, 80 to 90 percent, most startups fail. But then the founders themselves can go and start an, an, a new uh, new startup, or their employees can actually uh, go and start their own startups. And actually, we have examples of employees part of startups that we invested in. They came and approached us and proposed uh, uh, solutions, and then, then we invested in them. So this is we're seeing a ripple effect. And so the question is. Does it solve everything? No, it doesn't. But actually, one of the good things about startups is that they can get experience very quickly. It's very high-paced. Instead of corporates where you have a lot of regulations, you have a lot of policies, most startups, they just wing it. And, and that process itself gives exposure to most of the staff and the founders themselves. So the, the question is, are there opportunities? Yes, there are. Um, but the main thing is attitude. As long as attitude, there's a shift in uh, attitude, you'll have all the experience that you can get within the uh, startup world. Up to what extent you are uh, standing beside? Um, well, I sleep mostly midnight, wake up uh, after Fajr and continue working with them. So we ha work with them hand in hand. Um, so I'm, I'm used to getting calls from our founders at 1 a.m., 2 a.m. Um, and so the, the point is, we treat ourselves as co-founders to them. Um, uh, through ourselves, and we try to connect them, uh, just to clarify, uh, one of the things we're always trying to do is being a catalyst to them. So we connect them with other founders that might be in the same space or it's something different, and because we invest in the MENA region, we introduce them to other startups. Maybe there's a hardware startup in Oman, and there's another one in Egypt, which actually which is happening right now. They're working together. So one will help the other, and then also will help their employees as well, and with regard to resources as well. Um, so, uh, a good example is Imashif. They've acquired the company in Egypt. One of the, one of the challenges is because of uh, lack of resources. And uh, their CTO keeps on telling me, if you find anyone, please send them across to me. Um, most of the startups in Oman have uh, a great need for, uh, for employee. And they want Omani, 
and they want as many as they can get uh, because they, they cannot cope with the demand that they have. Definitely, you have quite examples here, and I'm that proof your, uh, your script. Thank you very much. Uh, talking now about the current era, the digital revolution, the fourth industrial revolution, what we talk about the technologies. Now the technologies came, and we all hear about the artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is going to change our even the employment. It will, uh, or maybe the technology is going to replace lots of uh, jobs which is available now. Uh, if I'm asking uh, Thraya, how technology is impacting the, this uh, area? Um, actually, this is a good question. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna highlight about how really the technology creates uh, a thousand jobs uh, for the youth. Um, let's think it from from another angle. First, the technology is a very powerful tool, and when we are thinking like how it's created uh, jobs, let's see the example of Uber, for example. The Uber drivers before we don't have we don't have the we cannot, if we want to hire a taxi, for example, we, can't, we cannot see the, the driver details, we can, you cannot track, for example, the map, uh, you cannot rate, you cannot pay. So just imagine now Uber, they have more than 160,000, uh, they created jobs from different, uh, from different uh, worldwide. Also another, another example, what I'm, I can talk about, which is uh, Talibat. Now, if you are in the middle of night and you are, you are hungry, you can just order for the food. And just imagine how really Talibat, they provide a thousand jobs because of the technology. Uh, and what I can see here in Oman, uh, many, many government entities and companies already started shifting uh, to automations, uh, and especially after the pandemic. And after the pandemic and uh, oh, because after the pandemic they realized the importance of technologies uh, plus how really they they want to empower the youth uh, and uh, the talented youth and, imp and employ them to achieve uh, the organizational goals another things about the technology actually many organization uh, the technology actually help to improve the quality of the work and time efficiency so this is actually encourage the companies to to expand their to expand their uh, services to open open new branches, and this is actually will help to uh, to hire new employees. On the other hand, um, there is another example when it comes to 3D printing. Before, if you want to build a house, for example, before you just you just. You, before, it's very difficult if you want to uh, build a house, but now 3D printing is an, an innovative digital solution that will help you to, to imagine your future, 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 uh, future house. So let's think it from this side. It's a new, a new customers, a new house will be built, and of course, a new jobs will be created, but in different way. Also, another point which is related to the freelancers. Now we can see um, there is emergence emerge for the freelancers from different uh, from different countries. Now, now you can you can complete your work uh, from your home, and this is of course will reduce the opex uh, for uh, for the organization itself. Um, what I can say, the technology it's a very powerful it's a very powerful tool. Uh, it helps. It helps. It helps the youth. It create many, many jobs. So to conclude in this, actually there is a wave. There is a wave of a new technology is coming. So either, so either we go along with it or we fight against it. So the decision actually is in our hand. Uh, thank you, Thraya. Uh, coming back to the HR guys, engineering Masoud and uh, Amr. Uh, now we know about this, uh, the current platforms, or the platforms is, uh, that we are, we are using. They are the employers. They are the employer, the platform, because anyone come and can log in, for example, Talibat, or uh, create his own account and start working in it. And who is the boss? The boss is the customer for, uh, for them. They will rank them either to use them or not. So for you as an HR guys, do you think that is going to touch your work and in few quite time maybe they can this platform replace the HR uh, team? Uh, let, me, um, let me shed some light from my understanding on this. You see folks, um, 
I, I will be very honest in telling you that my job, my company, and the industry that I am in, i.e. recruitment of the older fashion, is, is pretty much dead. Uh, LinkedIn has taken over. And other recruitment portal, portals uh, have taken over. Tamam? The only reason I'm in business, and there still are some, uh, you know, some prominent recruiters in the region, is because the region is behind technology by you know, about 10 years from the rest of the world. Headhunters will, will be in business for a little longer because headhunting is extremely personal. Yeah? Um, now, to answer your question, you know, we, we, we continuously keep on talking about employment. I, for one, don't necessarily agree that employment is the only way for these youngsters. Um, it is generating income. So doing, being a Talabad driver or an Uber driver is not a job by any means. Uh, Thuraya mentioned that uh, Uber has created 160,000 jobs, but I would challenge that number uh, I don't think those are full-time jobs. I think those are people who already have jobs and have started doing Uber after 4 p.m. or 5 p.m. If it were full-time jobs, I think the number would be a fraction of that. Same thing for, for Taliban drivers. So it's not really a career as such. Yeah? It's creating income, either their only income or you know, a little... A little, a little thing on the on the side, a little extra on the side. Yeah, so I'm not so concerned about that. My, uh, you know, to me, that's a great way of earning income, which is what I have been uh, advocating. Uh, you know, let's not let's stop talking about employments and jobs. Let's talk about creating income, entrepreneurship, uh, you know, service provision. But. <clears throat> As a concept, maybe in this time, yes, it's a part-time or it's maybe an extra income for them. But maybe for tomorrow, it can be considered as a full-time for them. Yeah, absolutely, it can, so. it can. And unless I am able to get to people, I as a recruiter, I'm able to get to people uh, like Talabat and, and Uber and Airbnb and get them to contract with me, I will lose their business. Yep, I because I think the same, right the same thing with the O taxi, because you are, I think, supposed to know O taxi. So people are just coming and uh, creating or uh, registering that uh, platform and then start using it. Uh, let us welcome here uh, Mr. Christophe Zurbi. Is he online? Sohil, can you check if he's online, Christophe? Yeah, he, he was online. I think he's just gone, but once he comes, we'll let you know. Okay, so we talk now about the opportunities. If we are coming to, uh, to talk about the challenges uh, with Mr. Masoud, what are the main challenges you force, or maybe we can face in the coming years? Um, the main challenges uh, we have is that the number of graduates, degree and diploma holders versus the availability of the jobs in, in Oman. Do we have enough jobs for them or we don't? This is number one. Do we have enough creation of jobs? It's not the jobs which are existing, it's how many jobs are created every year in Oman. Uh, because every year we have about 30 to 40,000 graduates. Do we have that kind of number that uh, is generated? And creation of jobs is coming from investments, from new companies, from uh, new, new technologies coming up, uh, investors from outside. This is the, uh, one of the main challenges. The other challenge is the, um, the educating the, um, uh, the job seekers uh, in terms of how they approach the market. At the moment, to, sorry to tell you, but the job seekers are very passive. They finish school or college, they go and register their name that they've graduated, and they go home and wait for a call from the ministry. Now, if you look at 10 years, before 10 years, 20 years ago, that was not the case. There was no registration, so every job seeker will go and find a job, and he will try his best to find a job. But at the moment, 
they just go. Because you, you keep interviewing people and saying what you've been doing the last three years. You said, I've registered. Nobody called me. So this is a big problem we're having at the moment, is the, the passiveness of the job seekers. They don't want to, to do any part-time jobs, because if they do part-time jobs or they do a job, they're not going to get an opportunity to go into a government uh, you know, job. Um, also, they're not ready for the interviews. They come here, you tell them, can you talk about yourself? He says, uh, it's my, my CV. I know it's in your CV, but can you tell me about yourself? Okay, one minute, and they stop, you know? And, and these interviews are in Arabic, by the way, it's not in English. They can't talk one minute about themselves. So we have a problem. How would you convince the employer to take you if you can't tell them about yourself? We tell them in, initially in the interviews, you know, uh, we don't care if you've been registered in the ministry or not. Tell me anything you've done. You've done a cashier, you've done a bus driver, a, a lorry, anything you've done, tell me. I'll accept it. All right? And then they start talking and they say, oh, I've been doing this. We have good quality people, but the problem is that they, they need grooming. Uh, the registration in the ministry and going home is not a solution. They need to register. They need to make sure that they have the right CV. They need to go training how to communicate to, to the employer when you go to the interviews. Okay? They need to be educated about how to sell themselves, how to market yourself. You know? If you've been doing two years of Talabat job and, uh, and other jobs and a cashier in a shop and, and other things, this is fantastic. You've, cashier, you've learned how to deal with money. Uh, Talabat, you've done uh, how to deal with customers also, and all those kind of things, you know? So uh, it's, it's not embarrassing, uh, all of these jobs. It's just uh, in terms of how do we groom these young guys to, to market themselves. And the other problem is we have to, the biggest challenge now we have in the market is the generation, the new generation. How do you deal with the new generation? The Z generation, the alpha generation that's coming up now. The, the Z generation, they don't care. I don't get a job, I'll sit down at home. I'll, you know, it's not the same as 30 years ago. Uh, you'll be embarrassed to stay at home. You'll do something. Uh, I'll give you two examples. Just about a few months back, w one person submitted a resignation. And I sat down with him and said, why are you, you resigning? He said, I don't have time to go to the gym. Okay? This is a Z generation. He resigned because he doesn't have time to go to the gym. Perspective. <laughs> All right. Now, now we, we as uh, uh, 40 years of age or whatever, managers, HR managers, we have to understand this is another generation we're dealing yes, with. Yes, exactly. You know. So these are the challenges. Yeah, this is this is this is a feedback. It's already already feedback and comments from the HR, from the employers, to you as a students now. In uh, for example, you are representing now an institution here. So have you prepared the student or yourself for 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 the market? Uh, because this is uh, really what uh, Engineer Masoud is giving. I mean, what they are facing from the from the graduates. Here, uh, the role of uh, skills that plays an important role uh, in this situation. He said that, uh, and the first problem that he is facing is with the graduates. They cannot talk about their self or about themselves in uh, one minute. They can uh, they can only talk in one minute, and they will gonna stop. Uh, the problem is they don't have the skills. So uh, that's why the learning and teaching nowadays that has been changed. Why is changed? Because we have to be adaptive. We have to, we, we, we must have the adaptation with the situation in there, uh, with the, that, uh, that we are facing now. So uh, we focus on how we develop uh, the students to go to the interviews. I, I will share my experience. I'm studying English language in Maja, at Majan University College. Uh, you will say that, uh, oh my God, you are studying English, so uh, you are studying uh, translation and literature, but I, I will say yes. But another thing that we are studying, the, uh, some modules that talk about how can English uh, develop in, uh, in the terms of uh, seeking jobs, how we can make our studies and communications, how we can communicate with each other. So, 
the problem is not the, with the degrees or not with their studies, but the problem is uh, they don't have the, uh, the skills that is required for the job they, that they want. This is my uh, perspective. Uh, hello. Yes. Can you ask questions, please? Well, if you don't mind. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very disappointed that you've been too harsh to, to the talent, to the job seekers, by stating that um, uh, they cannot like ex present themselves or talk in five to ten minutes, and also the way that they look for jobs, uh, and, you, and you compare them to the past ten years. Um, actually, this is not the way that how we like criticize um, uh, the, the talents, the job seekers, because they are the asset that who will participate in the development of the welfare of man's economy. Um, I, I, I myself now, I can assure you, I can bring you 50 candidates who can talk in not half an hour, in half a day, presenting themselves, their CVs, they know how to, but can you guarantee them to find jobs or to hire them? So the problem is not about the job seekers. We, do, we don't have actually the resources to hire them. We don't have the opportunities for them. If you can assure me, Tomorrow, I can get you 50 candidates and listen to them, not only expressing about their CVs, but also we talk about even the technology, the tools, and so on, they can bring you the, the knowledge out of the data or whatever we call them about the future skills. So I'm very disappointed, like being harsh the, to, to the talents and the way to criticize them as if the ministry is doing extremely good job and the mistake only for, I mean, relies on the talent. I'm not, I don't call them job seekers, mm -hmm. I call them talents, asset which we are not utilizing them. Look, I will tell you something. Here I'm not talking about the, uh, the job. You are not the one, the one who's next to you. Yes. Yeah, I know. But I so want to the man should go to him. Yeah, but I, I, want, I want to say something. Yeah, but and I'm not here to talk about the, uh, the ministry's job or the, uh, the employers, how to, uh, they work. But you are here to criticize them then? Yeah, but, yeah. Here, but yeah. no, no, they, there's their work, I don't know how they work. I, I think but it's targeted I, to HR, to HR team, yeah. to HR but people. I will give you the please, chance to please talk, do. then I will ask something. Okay, um, I'm talking about facts. I'm not talking about books here, what I've read in the books, okay? I interview about 500 to 700 people every year. Okay. And this is my feedback, all right? It's really up to you if you accept this as the fact or if you don't. What I'm saying here is that we have an issue, okay. all right? Okay. And we need to sort it out because if we don't sort it out, it will become bad, even worse in the Good. future. Good, the question then, what is your solution for this? If you are saying this is a problem, so what, what, what solution you came up with instead of criticizing them here in public? I didn't say, uh, I, what I said here is, I already said to you, I said here is that what we need to do is to provide opportunities for these young guys, okay, not just registering them, okay, but groom them, train them, okay, how to go for interviews, okay, what kind of answers they can answer when they go for interviews. This is what I said. What sort of question do you ask them? Very simple question. Tell me about yourself. About myself? My that's, name that's what, is That's Jamie one of the questions, Arshaxi. all right? You know, it's a simple question, my dear. We don't ask any complicated questions. So, so that, does that mean graduates really cannot express themselves after yeah. being five years in the uni? No. Uh, no? Dr. Dr. Gamil, if he can, he can postpone this, some of the discussion by the end. Let us finish. I have some questions. Maybe they can answer. Okay, but one point, but the last point. I still is, like, stick to my point. I can bring you tomorrow 50 candidates. Challenge them, please. Thank you. You have anything, uh, Mr. Okay. okay. My name is Justin Maharuki. Uh, I work for PDO. Uh, I think we were together with Amar in Neymar and uh, Karna Alam as a telecom engineer. I'm an advisor to the Minister of uh, uh, Transport, Communication, and Information Technology. And my role is mostly focused on digital technology. And uh, yeah, the digital technology, and I was in the panel here, uh, providing the insight on the way how we stimulate the market. I respect the opinions of you guys, 
because you give your opinions from your heart. I understand you want to do something for the country to support the youth uh, and uh, to provide and you know, create job opportunities, which is fair point in a way or the other. I think it's, it's good to have realistic and uh, I would like to look at it in a different way that uh, let's look into these areas of weakness as opportunities so it helps us to build a proper plan for the future of these young people who really are looking for opportunities. And I can tell you the brain power here is much bigger than most of us who are there and what. And uh, I think uh, the dynamic of this environment the, the, the learning mechanism is faster than me, I can tell you. Uh, myself and Amor, we can give you more information where we've been doing it. Now, I think I'm connecting back into the future challenges or the future skills. That's where we're going. And that's where this is the main objective of having it. It is important for us to see how do we prepare the young workforce of today that is able to respond to the future. And when I say respond to the future, is addressing the business needs, addressing the business objectives. That's why we create value into the country where we contribute into the GDP and create job opportunities. Now, this is a major challenge. We discuss every day with the minister and the secretary how we stimulate the market. And uh, if you look at the 2040 vision, stimulation of the market on ICT is one area. We're talking about 17,000 employees, unemployed, the graduate. They need to be given opportunities. Opportunity has to happen. It. We went through the training program when we were in Neymar and uh, Karnalam. There were no Oman technicians in those days. Risk takers. The company has taken the risk. Today, 100% Omanized as a telecom department and what. Now, as a manager, I'm also holding a senior role in a petroleum engineer. I moved in IT. I'm still contributing into that area. Now. The challenges we face is not an isolated challenge in Oman. It's a global issue today, unemployment. It is good to understand what is going on in other areas and how they stimulate the market. I'll give an example. A startup, you know, OTF. I used to deal with Yusuf al uh, uh, before I moved out. It's an opportunity to create job opportunities for the startup. Rotterdam, in 2020, they created 12,000 jobs. That's what stimulation is required for us to create that. Currently, if we keep on pushing for the existing organization, you're squeezing a sponge, there's nothing to take it out. It requires a paradigm shift, a different way is how to look at it to create those job opportunities. When we create the future, the skill set of the future, where the commercial mindset, you know, com competitive advantage, the critical thinking, and what? This is the future needs, and aligning with the global trend, it helps us to reshape it, this young workforce today. We should not think that recruitment has to be only in Oman. Guys, Facebook, they changed their name, I don't remember very well, I think it's Meta. This bigger company, bigger fungus, they recruit people globally. They don't need to see your face. They want your skill set. It's an opportunity. If you look at it as an Oman, young Oman is here, don't forget we are old, we are still contributing to the GDP of the country. But I think the most important here is how you fill the, you fill the reservoir of Oman recontributing to the GDP. Today, if I've got you know, 5,000 employees who are recruited globally, you bring money to the Oman. That's an income of the Oman which should support many families across the organization. So that paradigm shift of thinking, stimulating the market, Startups and SME is critical, and this is what the government is doing now. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Nasser, for sharing these insights. Uh, in fact, that one question that for shaping the future skills is depending on HR or on the CEO or the leading the lead, leading person. So, who can answer this question? What is the question again? Shaping the future skills. So for the talents and uh, make people to be adapted with the future skills, what's required in the future? Because today you have, for example, driver, and the company has been changing to be digitalized. So who will can who, uh, to develop this driver to be? Some of the company they say that no, I can I can release this uh, driver and find another job uh, outside. Some of them they said no, we need we need to develop the, the skill of this driver. So it depends on the HR or the 
CEO. Um, I will, and first of all, I, um, I will submit to you that in Oman and in the region, there are very few jobs that are being digitized. Um, and, and one of the reasons is because we are behind the world by, by, by some time. Yeah? So that isn't going to happen here in, in a strong way very soon. Okay? I think the, the one job that has indeed been taken over by technology is telemetry, measuring, and reading. So I think one of you folks, uh, perhaps some of you, you spoke about uh, meter readers, or was it yourself? Sorry. Smart meters. Yeah, smart, smart meters, meters and, and so on and so forth. So that, yes. Uh, drivers, maybe. But nothing substantial. Perhaps your question then becomes, OK, well, where does the challenge of reskilling fu for future jobs lie with? Is it still within the? the management of the company? Is it with the HR? Honestly, I don't know, but I think it is the industry that yes. answers that question. And, and there indeed really needs to be a continuous dialogue between the educational institutions and the businesses. Education, by definition, is extremely slow in changing its curriculum, by definition because it's highly regulated, all right? But skills don't have to be like that. Skills uh, can, can be certified from chartered institutions, not necessarily by educational, pure educational institution. Okay, thank you. Can, I, a good can I ask a question, yeah. Dr. Salim, if that's okay? Just to help add, can I ask a question? Okay. Yeah. Um, I've lived in Oman for more than 20 years and I work with Omani people who are doing exceptionally, exemplary well, who are working abroad. We had two speakers, keynote speakers, uh, Dr. Abdullah Babud, who worked in Cambridge, who worked in Singapore at the New York Uni uh, National University, Qatar and now in Japan at the Waseda University. We had Dr. Am Amravas, who was one of the professors with you, Dr. Salim. 20 years ago I knew him, now he's working in the States as a national professor. My question is like, is it a culture thing that we're trying to look for jobs in a small economy which is already beaten by oil prices and COVID? Whereas some of my friends, Omani friends, have gone, who did very well in the government, government jobs you don't leave, isn't it? They've left government jobs, gone to work in international firms in Dubai, and now to Riyadh. We talk about Gulf Corporation Council. Where does the Corporation Council comes in providing the opportunity for jobs? Is my question to anybody on the panel. Sorry, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not qualified to answer where there's the GCC fall uh, in providing these, but I can tell you that it, you know, it, there is an excellent opportunity out there. I was the vice president for a company called Damak. Uh, I suppose many people know what Damak, most people would know what Damak is. So I lived in, in, uh, in, in the United Arab Emirates uh, and the region for over five years. It's difficult, let me tell you this, because for, for Omanis that go abroad to work, even registering yourself in PASI is difficult. It's, it's really challenging. Yeah? So I don't think it is as well enabled as you may hear of it in the media. But the opportunities are there. There are more jobs being created in neighboring countries than they are here locally. And that is a function of the economy, how good we are in attracting FDI, how good we are in making it easy for people to live and do business in Oman. Yeah? Uh, so that's my answer to it. Uh, thank you. We should. I, I love this. I think uh, when it comes to in-country value and digital technology. Make sure that, next time yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. to no, it's all right, it's all right. I like, that's why I was away. I just came for this. Uh, yeah. I think uh, to shade of uh, what you said, it, uh, the future is about the skills. The attraction of the people, whatever to work 
is about your competence and skill set you do have it. Opportunity will arise it as long as we build the future to make sure what is needed by the industry today is addressed and is really embedded into the ways of working. If I go back into what Amory said is, I think what is missing, I've been here for three days. I think one of the areas where I'm seeing there's a gap, this is my opinion, guys, I could be wrong, uh, and let me put it up front so it's managed in a, in a better way as a customer. Uh, it requires a strategic partnership and collaboration between the academia, the research and development, and the industry. We are here to address the industry needs to create value. You create value because you deliver what is there within the industry. You could see one of the areas here yesterday when we were talking uh, with uh, you know, academia, some of the professors, they came up and said, oh, we, the, every, you know, every, all of us will be replaced by a robot. In my time, I guarantee you that did not happen. Yet. I don't think you're gonna replace a geologist by a robot. It's gonna change the ways of working. It will bring efficiency, the cost-effective manner, as, you know, simplify our process and make it faster, and that's why we support and work very closely with our shareholder. But to replace that technical know-how, it will continue to be there. And you look at it on AI, I've got almost 15 projects going on in my portfolio in AI. You need a developer who is an IT. You need an assure who will assure that AI is delivering what is needed by the business. And that assure is mostly is the domain expert, is a technical domain expert. So that will continue. Just to go back and emphasize on what we are saying is, I think the future is brighter. It is, the, yesterday we were talking about, you said, the new dynamics, the workforce dynamic is changing it. You have got people very smart, they can learn very quickly. What is needed from us and authority and the regulation is to create a framework where you can, you can enable that thinking, critical thinking, where you drive fast. Aid. This is not something new, guys. This has happened in many areas. You look into Singapore, you look, you know, South Korea, Silicon Valley, and what it. The other areas which I need to emphasize, sorry, I'm taking a bit more longer time uh, than what uh, people may see is. It's not about Oman is working outside. I'm pleased to see Oman works outside because they've got the skill set. That's why they've been employed there. And I call these Amoas the global people who can play. But also, the other way around. We need brain power. And when I say brain power, scientists, to come and work in Oman. We pay more money. They will create how many job opportunities by doing so. The success of US today, it is that strategy. They call a, a something visa for the people where they get accelerated, they become citizen, and what? If you go to Silicon Valley, today. Majority of the cream of the cream are Asians. This is what we can do it. So it's a paradigm shift. It requires that stimulation. It requires that thinking out of the box to create. If we don't, then we'll continue discussing this as the way we discussed today. That's my view, guys. Well, we should wish that the dark area between academics and, and uh, the industry to be revealed. Because the academicians, they say that we are dedicated people for the future skill for the industry. And the industry say that the graduates are not uh, fulfilling the requirement for the industry. So, yeah, we need to line between uh, the academician and the, and the industry. And now that most, most of the advisory boards in the academician institution, they involve some from the industry themselves. So to listen from them what is required for the future in each field, either in ICT or in petroleum or whatever, engineering and whatever. Um, uh, I can say that Oman is not isolated from the world when you say that Mr. Amr, that uh, is not list of the jobs now is being digitalized. But according to some studies, that yes, some of the jobs has been eliminated by, by embedding or by adopting the technologies, but there are lots of other jobs has been created. So let, let us give the mic to Thiraya to, to elaborate these things. Uh, do you mind if I ask uh, one question? Um, you know, there's a lot of talk about job seekers um, looking for work, especially in IT. Um, I think one of the biggest gaps we have in Oman and in the region as a whole is vendor dependence. Vendor dependence. So we purchase 99% of whatever 
not only IT, but systems that we have in our country. We are an importer. Um, a lot of the work that is done on SLAs, maintenance, operation of these systems, is also imported from these companies. The kind of jobs available for IT workers in Oman uh, are not necessarily highly skilled works, and that's why I feel a lot of people get bored. I'm not talking about how many job seekers are skilled, not skilled. Dr. Jamil, this is, please don't attack me. Um, <laughs> uh, no, what I mean to say is the guys who are skilled and capable, uh, I feel the opportunities for, for them to excel and grow and learn are limited because uh, the government needs to make these systems more available uh, to the market. So my question is, what, what is the ministry doing to enable opportunities for fresh graduates or experienced or capable people to work on these systems with the government in maintaining and running and operating them? So I think that the same question was targeted now to Tharaya to answer these things. Yeah. Uh, actually, first I would like uh, to add something for Dr. Gamil. Actually, he was, <laughs> he teach me when I was in the college. <laughs> He always loved to challenge us. Um, actually, if I'm talking from my side, this is personal. I think the problem is when it comes to the, to, the, to the employment, I think because there is no jobs. Basically, there is no jobs. Actually, this is the problem. I was, I was in my ministry 10 years, 10 years, and within my 10 years, I just asked about just two employees to help me. Till today, I'm just working alone. I also I only, only have one person with me. So I think the problem, because there is no jobs, there is no opportunities for the youth. If I can add something, yeah. since we are speaking about uh, the, you know, future skills and so on, what we need today, you know, to transfer to the youth, that they should not wait for the job. They should, since they are in the school and since they are joining the university, they should start thinking, how can they be digitalized, how they can create opportunity. Uh, I would really like to share with you a very successful story of NEC. Do you know that NEC started as a startup, National Energy Center? It is today semi-government, a leading huge projects when it comes to the smart technologies. And it started by a fresh graduate from the college, engineer Abdul al -Badi. He graduated fresh as electricity engineer. He did not wait to get a job. And I always like to share his story. Why? Because we need to transfer this to the youth. Don't wait for the jobs. You know, now, nowadays we have a lot of online platforms. We have a lot of platforms that can provide for you to be a freelancer. You can be freelancer as a coach, as a translator, as a program. So don't wait the government to provide for you the jobs. If we are going to speak about the skills, let us empower the youth. It is there. They should just work harder, and they can get the jobs. Thank you so much. This is maybe maybe Engineer Mohammed uh, Mohammed Rasmi. He can elaborate on this one to uh, to tell us about the role of uh, OTF. Uh. Um, thank you very much. Um, so just one thing I wanted to uh, highlight: there is no one magic pill that will solve all our problems. And so, um, I think one of the main uh, challenges that is. Uh, I am in a, in a, I guess, in a privileged position where I work with startups, and we do not adhere to, no, to, to the norms, uh, where we can work on uh, on anything. And because of that, the challenges that people see, we see them as opportunities. We don't see them as problems. We see them as uh, opportunities to actually uh, disrupt uh, technologies. And because of that. Um, uh, um, one thing that we're doing at OTF at the moment is running through our accession programs is to actually empower our founders, empower their staff to be able to actually go. Uh, because one thing I keep on telling them, we cannot guarantee the, your destination. The only thing we can guarantee is the journey and the quality of the journey and to reach that. It might be that you end up uh, exiting um, and it's being successful, like Emashif, or other startups that have not been successful. But then again, as founders, they've been able to go and work somewhere else and be able to actually do something. So trying to solve, trying to use one pill to solve all our problems, I think that's not a very sane way to do it. 
I think there should be a multi-channel approach to all, all the different uh, uh, channels that we have. You need people in academia, you need people in the industry, you need people that actually do research. Um, so one of the things we, we're doing at the moment is working with academia to be able to help them in commercializing their, uh, their patents. That's one side. Another th side we're working is in looking at the curriculum itself and looking at ways to be able to in, um, um, introduce this entrepreneurship to these uh, students. So before they graduate, they have the skill set to either decide to work in startups or actually form their own startups. Um, money at the moment is declining. Money is, the, is the, the smallest problem. The money is not the issue. Within uh, the venture capital world, the money is the least problem that people have. The biggest problem is actually finding talent and finding uh, actually people that actually start startup and um, um, and be able to, to grow. I'll give you a quick example. I was in, um, in Egypt last week and there was an event called Rise Up. Before the event, there was an announcement of a startup uh, that raised $11 million um, um, at pre-seed, okay? So one of the biggest challenges is always knowing um, uh, the opportunities that you have and, and, and not missing out on them. So the question is, why did the startup, we, just to clarify, we invest $50,000 for a pre-seed, the startup was able to raise 11 million. Now the question is why? First of all, the founders were not first time founders, they were actually had experience before, they were working other startups uh, again, they had the network effect. So these are things we're trying to introduce. So the question is, uh, we're trying to build, right now we're trying to build future investors hopefully within the next five to ten years. That our stars are investing right now, they eventually they'll become investors. And that will solve a problem, not all problems. Every different uh, academia, uh, as uh, Amar, he left, but as you're saying, that there's always a lag. And I don't think we're trying to should try it, because in, in, the, in academia, the main thing helps you is understanding how to learn. As long as you've, you capture that, then that's enough. And actually teaching you every single thing that you need to do when you get a job, that's, that's not realistic. Um, so that's one part. Uh, the other part is uh, getting industry to actually encourage more and more uh, people to look at different problem sets and encourage people to actually innovate and then getting people to actually invest in them. I think that's uh, something that will address most of these, or at least part of these problems. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Mohammed. Of course, uh, starting from zero as a startup to be a standalone is not an easy journey. It's a long journey and there is lots of difficulties. Um, Dr. Sam, again, again to, uh, I didn't answer my question. <laughs> I didn't answer my question that uh, the technology will kill the okay. jobs. Yeah. Okay, go, go ahead. So can I go, go ahead, ahead? Before, yeah. before we come to Mr. Uh, sorry for interrupting. No, it's okay. Yeah, okay. Um, so, so basically there is a lot of debate that the new technologies, especially when it comes to machine learning and AI, the RBA, it will kill uh, the jobs. But but, in, but the, let's see the facts and statistics. And uh, according to McKinsey, uh, it's around the, uh, around the, the study showed that it's around 400, 400 million jobs uh, that will, will, will kill the jobs. It's not will create, sorry. But on the other hand, about, um, it's about, between, uh, this is actually to 20, by 2030. And by 2030, it will create uh, about eight, around 800, 890 million jobs. So as you can see, there is, there is a high potential when it comes to emergence technologies. That's why what we need to do uh, to, to educate uh, the youth, let them learn more about how to create algorithms, how to work with the machine learning itself. Because I can see in my situation, uh, when the candidates, uh, when we interview the candidates, for example, about uh, developers, we ask them, did they know anything about emergence technologies? i surprised. They say, what is emergence technologies? How comes you didn't, that's why I think uh, the youth, they have to be up to, up, to, up to date, they have to read, they have to, uh, to see, because I believe the youth, they are, they are the asset, we can invest them, uh, actually they, they will achieve the organizational goals when it comes uh, to that. Maybe, uh, if you don't mind, if yeah. I chip in again, sorry, apology. I think I'm excited on this, that's why I keep on chipping in. No, it's all right. I think you're sitting here. Yeah, sitting I, here. Would, I, I would love to see you here, uh, uh, Mr. Masa. Sitting here is an opportunity to hit them hard. That's where I'm coming from. <laughs> that's I think, he, Raya, you raised a, a, you know, a good point here. The dynamic is changing. 
It's not the job is disappearing. It. The scope of work is disappearing. It. And it is us to prepare ourselves and make sure that we do have programs to address it. Upskilling and reskilling is the core of our business today. Now, when I hear somebody came over to my team, I lead the data management analytics team, and he, he looked around, almost uh, there are 80 people working there. I'm proud of them, and 60% are ladies who are doing a great job. So it's a good, good day for me to serve our ladies before we close this session. And I know I'm, I'm a bit maybe irritating the, the, the boys and the, the male, but you should be happy to see that. They're... So going back to the core, what I'm talking about is whenever it moves into you see these markets we know already. We can see it already in different forums, well, a World Economic Forum, McKenzie and what it is. It's an organization to prepare themselves on upskilling. It's not that people, they lose their job. It is having the upskilling those people to acquire the new skill set which is needed to drive it. And there is an element of reskilling. Reskilling is mostly upgrade. Upskilling is mostly, also you get new people who are popping in with the new skills and that's where academia, research and development play a bigger role. It's a funnel. If you do not manage the funnel well, you will get an influx and you will not be able to manage it. It's important. So for me, I'm a technology innovator. I love technology. I bought the first Tesla in Oman. It is with me. And I work in the oil and gas industry. I've been challenged aggressively. You are against our business. Because where are we going to sell the oil? And I remember when we were talking to His Excellency, Dr. Rumi said, the oil which I will utilize, we can sell it and bring the money into the country. So I think he, I like to see that innovation. But if we do not have a proper programs on addressing these unemployment issues, we will collapse it. Upskilling and reskilling is the way forward. And we should have it uh, to make sure that, uh, you know, the new skill sets are required. That's why future skills it comes up in place. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, of course, that, let me one comment on Mr. Nasser that what he said. In order to adopt any technology, there are five steps to do it. After uh, regulation and uh, regulation, uh, ma making regulation and policies for the technologies, we have to educate and uh, the, it can be education and learning for the people and then create the opportunities uh, till, till we adopt these things. Definitely, and I think the technologies is not going to eliminate the people or the skill. It eliminate the task itself. Yeah, eliminate the task. It will be replaced, replaced by the technology. But the skills, of course, it will be upskilling for the people. They will be more uh, to develop those, those people. And instead of working manually, they will... New, new way of phone. Yes. Doctor, uh, doctor, sorry, just because of uh, time, uh, we've gone way over what we had planned for. And um, uh, maybe we can now bring this to a, to a close. Uh, I'll just maybe let you and uh, the panelists make final comments. Um, if, if, if I could just say quickly, it's really good that everyone is interested in this topic. You can tell it's a very important topic. Uh, and I think some of the discussions and arguments are also based around demand and supply. There will never be enough demand to be able to employ everyone. Um, but the idea of having future skills is not only to have a job, but is to be ready when the job comes to you, is to, is to, have, uh, is to be ready for when you have that opportunity. Uh, we don't know when that, when that opportunity will come, and uh, things in Oman uh, could improve drastically over the coming years. I feel Oman has been unlucky at times. We were slow. Uh, uh, we started late, um, and then when things were improving in the early 2000s, and we had the, uh, the financial crisis, and then re more recently COVID. So I think a lot of things have been done and are in place, but uh, we haven't been able to get out of a, a difficult situation. Um, and I think... Um, like many of you mentioned, it's the responsibility of different segments of society. In Oman, we don't have a strong civil society yet, and I think by having a strong civil society, uh, government can't do everything. It's up to us to consult uh, and educate and, and, and lobby the government to um, steer in the right direction. And um, when we announced the GEDEX Advisory Committee, which should be a committee focusing on education, training and skills to have people such as the panelists and the audience here on this committee, it can help us to um, provide recommendations and to have discuss discussions such as today. So if you could just make a final comments and then we can uh, close off uh, this great panel discussion. Anyone who would like to comment? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> I want to add one thing. Uh, 
actually uh, to create new jobs here in Oman, we need also to have new technologies. So companies should start to shift some projects from manually to uh, automation and to be as smart. So we have good example here where in uh, National Energy Center, we have uh, shifted and moved to, from manually to uh, smart meters. And within this new technology, we have created a lot of jobs, like uh, employees who are working on the maintenance, software, replacement. So within one, uh, it was only doing this one by one employee, going to the met, uh, meters and brought all uh, reads. Now we have three employees which uh, will be responsible to do all this, uh, uh, all capture and uh, bring all these uh, reads. So new technologies, we, we can't say that it will kill the new jobs here in Oman. It will also uh, open new uh, jobs and opportunities. Thank you, Mr. Saif. Uh, Engineer Masoud, you have any Just comment? A, a comment. Uh, I'm looking at it from the private sector. I've been working for the last 31 years in the private sector, uh, nine companies. What we're looking actually, uh, what we want from people is not to be disappointed when they get any job in the market. If you get a cashier, if you get a, a driver, uh, delivering gas, delivering food, all of these jobs, until you get the right job that you want, to us, is an asset. Because if somebody comes to me here and saying, I've done delivery, I said, oh, how did you do it? How do you talk to our customers? Do you have a challenge with the customer? Uh, he will say, I, I was a cashier. I said, okay, so you know how to count money and how do you deal with customers? Every job, the Thanawiya graduate or a degree graduate, a diploma graduate, takes until he gets the right job for us as a private sector is important. We measure their skills and what they've learned during these. And this is one of the success factors for all of the young ones who here who take any jobs. Taban fee some, some of the people who don't want to take any job. They're waiting for a particular job. But it's very important to inject in the mind of the people, okay, that any job is, is, is you know, the problem is that we face in the interviews. Uh, I'll tell them, can you tell me what did you do? He say, I didn't uh, register in any job. I said, okay, did you do part-time jobs? Uh, yeah, maybe. Did you do a job, at a family job? You're, 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 oh, yeah, yeah. I was working with my uncle. Uh, I was working with who and whatever. And then after five minutes, he opened up and talks about things. You'll be surprised. Most of these Omanis, okay, they worked in many, many jobs. But they're afraid of saying that they worked in these jobs because they feel that the employer... Uh, degrade these jobs, but it's not true. We, we appreciate all the jobs that they do, whether you're, you're a delivery person or, or whatever. So what we need to do is to encourage while the, the person, instead of staying at home, take any job, do anything, because every job you will learn something. That's what I'm the message. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Uh, in the end, I would like to say something that's very, really important to all the students or all the all uh, human beings even uh, who are seeking for a job or uh, waiting for a chance or something. Uh, my message is don't wait to opportunity or uh, for a chance. You have to make it by yourself. How you can make it? By spending everything in your life. Spend all uh, the resources that you have. Even if it's uh, high or low, you can manage it. So this is that will make you as uh, as a human, as a good human, uh, as a, a good person who wants to uh, arrive to something, an ambitious person. So, uh, what I want to say is, uh, don't uh, don't w uh, don't wait for a chance. Make it by yourself. And if the chance come to you, spend it as well. Spend everything that you have in your life. So this, because this will gonna uh, help you in your daily life even, and it helps you how you can gain your goal or your uh, ambition. Destin destination. Yeah, Thank the you. destination. Even uh, the last thing that I would like to say is, 
spend your skills, the skills that can be approved by yourself, by uh, dealing with the new people, by uh, communication, the most, and uh, the adaptation even. You have to be adaptive with the situations that you are facing. Don't be in, uh, in uh, just one situation. You have to be adaptive with the all situations that you have. I will give you an example in the education field. The education before it was face to face and there's nothing new and just the e-learning and uh, not that much uh, uh, quite good. But now it's improved because of COVID-19. Because the education uh, has been changed to online, this is an improvement. Now we have the blended learning, the blended education, how they, they are studying face-to-face, -face, how they are studying online classes, how they attend and use sessions, how we are doing webinars. These all things uh, makes the, uh, the, the students, the, uh, the people, the, the degree don't uh, identify you. You identify the degree. Uh, you, are, you are the one who can identify yourself by explore yourself, put yourself in different situation, uh, identify your passion. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Um, thank you very much for hosting uh, me today. Um, um, the, from our objective, the, the, the future is, is very bright and there's so many opportunities and it's, it depends on the I guess the future of the youth deciding to make the jump. Um, if anyone is interested in startups, please reach out. We're always, so th we don't care about the ideas as much as, as the, the founders themselves, because ideas can change, uh, but the founders, if whatever they build, they can actually adapt, as uh, Said was saying. As long as you're willing to adapt uh, to the circumstances you're in, uh, we're more than happy to, to look at potentially investing in the startups. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mohammed Thraya. Uh, uh, only one my advice is for the organization, they have to really upgrade uh, their employee skills. Uh, they should have the plan in order to meet uh, the requirements, the rapid change in technology nowadays. And uh, I don't know what's your name, because you, you mentioned the same point. Yes, Nasser. Uh, and Nasser said a valid point, which, I, which is regarding to the upgrading and uh, reskilling the future, because the future, when it comes to technology, I, for, for example, in my organization, I cannot see we will meet the future if, we, if there are the employees in the same situation. That's why we have to train them. Let's them, let's them, uh, let's them, let's see, keep it up with this rapid change in the technology. Thank you, thank you, Theraya, and thank you all for the panelists. Of course, uh, the, the challenges today, it can be an opportunity for tomorrow. So please take the challenges today, educate, uh, especially for the job seekers, so educate their skill, upskill themselves to be an opportunity for them and a credit. Utilize all the skills that what you have. At, uh, as Engineer Masoud said, talk about yourself, even for a single thing and a small thing. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Dr. Salem, I just want to ask uh, one minute of everybody's time. Um, from the last three days, what we understand that the Oman's Ministry of Higher Education has invested in a lot of graduates and most of them are IT graduates, right? And they are unemployed, right? This is a fact we cannot change. Now, what we are trying to do is a little bit facilitation forum where our comics exhibition, where my colleague Viam is the assistant project manager, and I want to put this to Mahmoud al-Raspi. He mentioned very good that there is no problem for money. Money is not a problem. Uh, His Royal Highness Sheikh uh, Mohammed bin Salman was just here. He is opening up a big dream which is like Neom. Money is not a problem. The sovereign funds, like if you look at the uh, wealth funds, Kuwait, Saudi, Abu Dhabi, Oman, money is there. Money is in abundance and you're saying it right. And what we want to do is, also talent is there. Yes, Oman Technology Fund does a lot of work with talent, identifying talent, talent is there. A lot of talent approaches us and what we did in comics, the exhibition coming up, there's a poster there in May. We're going to give away space to 150 ICT SMEs from Oman, mostly from Oman, but also from the GCC. And what we're looking here is like, we will give the opportunity away in the largest IT show of Oman. 
we want to bring the government like this in larger quantity because comics gets more than 30,000 visitors from the government to the corporates to the public to the investors. We want to create this area where investors can come, not just from Oman. Let's try to see if we can collaborate with the Kuwaitis, with the Arab Fund, with the Saudis, bring some investors here and look at these opportunities of the Omanis. They have excellent ideas. Like Maybe some of them are shy to even come to you because they think they're not prepared. They, they talk to us, they talk to Viam. So we'll give 150 opportunities. We want you to enable it with investors, with people who can help them. And I think there's no problem then, you know. This is maybe one of the solutions just in the IT sector. So Mahmoud, you know, please try to help Yam to help the 150 ICT SMEs. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Salim. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, the panelists, the chair of the panelists, Dr. Salim. We really appreciate everybody's time. We had a very good three useful days where we discussed, we had very difficult questions, we had like open-minded people answering questions.